Agriculture is not often something that comes to mind when one thinks of Saudi Arabia because of its extensive deserts and generally arid landscape. Yet the nation has made a significant advance toward agricultural advancement in a daring move that has shocked the rest of the world. Now, we're going to show you an amazing phenomenon that's unlike anything you've ever seen. The scientific community throughout the world has been amazed by Saudi Arabia's agricultural progress. Watch the whole thing to find out the truth. Saudi Arabia, often known as the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, is the most populous Arab nation in the Middle East. It has Jordan and Iraq to the north and northeast, Kuwait, Qatar, Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates to the east, Oman to the southeast, and Yemen to the south. Yemen is the southernmost country in the region. The first Saudi state was established in 1744, and this year is considered to be the beginning of Saudi Arabia's history. In 1902, Abdulaziz bin Saud conquered Riyadh, the ancestral home of the Al Saud family, marking the beginning of the process that would eventually lead to the establishment of the modern kingdom of Saudi Arabia. This process was completed in 1932 when the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia was proclaimed and officially recognized. The Kingdom of Saudi Arabia is located in the center of the Arabian Peninsula, between the Persian Gulf and the Red Sea. The territory has a total shoreline of 2,640 kilometers and an overall area of 829,999 square miles. First, let's take a deep look at the history of Saudi Arabia. The Saudi Arabian government conducted a significant reorganization of the agricultural sector in the country during the 1970s and 1980s. Food security through self-sufficiency was included as one of the stated objectives, along with the enhancement of rural incomes. Although the agricultural development program was effective in increasing the domestic output of various significant crops and foodstuffs thanks to the implementation of modern farming techniques, these goals have not been totally accomplished despite the program's success. In terms of being able to provide for its own needs, the kingdom created a little surplus, which was enough to allow for the export of some quantities of food. When the entire production process is taken into consideration, however, the importation of fertilizers, equipment, and labor has made the kingdom even more dependent on foreign inputs to bring food to the average Saudi household. This is because fertilizers, equipment, and labor are all brought into the country from outside the region. Two distinct patterns of income distribution have been apparent traditional agricultural regions have not benefited from the development program, and the building of large-scale agricultural production units has been facilitated by the financial support provided by the government. Several of these were owned by extremely wealthy individuals and major corporations, yet they were managed and administered by organizations located in other countries. The program had an impact that was less than desirable when seen from the point of view of the environment. It has not only led to a significant depletion of the kingdom's water resources, with the majority of the water being drawn from aquifers that were not replenishable, but it has also necessitated the application of enormous quantities of chemical fertilizers in order to increase crop yields. In 1992, the Saudi agricultural plan was only viable so long as the government continued to provide high levels of direct and indirect subsidies, which was a burden on the country's budget and external accounts. In 1984, agriculture was responsible for 3.3% of the total contribution to the gross domestic product. It reached 5.1% in 2001. However, this was despite the fact that oil earnings were falling at the time. As Saudi Arabia has reached a level of self-sufficiency in the production of various agricultural goods, the country's agricultural sector is primarily focused on the export of goods such as dairy products, eggs, fish, poultry, dates, fruits, vegetables and flowers to markets in other countries. The Saudi Arabian government has a significant presence in the agricultural sector and subsidizes large-scale farming operations. The Ministry of Environment, Water and Agriculture are principally responsible for the nation's agricultural policies. The private sector is also important to the agricultural industry of the country, despite the fact that the government provides low-cost water, fuel and power, as well as long-term loans without any interest and duty-free imports of raw materials and machinery. There are parts of Saudi Arabia where the climate is suitable for agriculture, despite the fact that the country is commonly thought of as a desert. Rainfall occurs throughout the winter season of every year in Saudi Arabia. However, it rarely exceeds 100 millimeters, with the exception of the southern region of the country. 
Large swaths of the desert have been turned into agricultural fields thanks in great part to efforts made by the government to facilitate this process. The development of agriculture in the country has advanced thanks to the implementation of massive irrigation projects and the use of large-scale automation. This has resulted in the addition of formerly uncultivated areas to the stock of cultivatable land. In a report, the Food and Agriculture Organization suggests that paying extra consideration to create and nurture the agro-system in the desert may lead to interference in the ecosystem of the desert, which would lead to undesirable results if it were allowed to continue. This recommendation was made in response to a question that was posed in the report. In spite of the fact that the bulk of Saudi Arabia's landmass is made up of desert, there are a remarkable amount of native plant species that were able to survive in the severe environment. Presently, as part of the Saudi Green Initiative, efforts are being made to maintain and possibly expand the quantity of greenery that exists in the kingdom. The kingdom is home to a plethora of vegetation, including over 2,000 wild plant species that belong to 142 families. This greenery may be found across the kingdom, from the desert vistas in the north to the region of Asir in the south. However, the Saudi National Center for Wildlife reports that approximately 600 of these species are considered to be in a state of threatened extinction, and 21 of these species are maybe already extinct. With the goal of planting 450 million trees by the year 2030, the Sustainable Growth Initiative, which was introduced in March 2021, is the most ambitious reforestation effort the nation has ever seen. By the end of 2021, the kingdom's 13 regions had collectively seen the planting of approximately 10 million trees. It's possible that woods aren't the first kind of environment that comes to mind when one thinks about Saudi Arabia. On the other hand, the kingdom is home to over 2.7 million hectares of forest, most of which may be found in the inaccessible highlands of Aba and Asir in the southwest. To say nothing of the projected greening of the desert, the target of planting 450 million trees may appear to be an overly ambitious aim, particularly in light of the rapid urbanization that the kingdom is currently experiencing. But the reality is that the Saudi government has established specific SGI goals to incorporate green spaces harmoniously into urban expansion. These goals include parkland and afforestation within the limits of the kingdom's desert cities. These goals were established to counteract the potential harm that could be caused by urban sprawl. Greening unmanaged surfaces within these cities will not only help to slow the rise in temperatures, but it will also help to reduce emissions of carbon dioxide, improve air quality, make it possible for people to lead more active lifestyles, and make cities more aesthetically pleasing in a manner that is environmentally responsible. In climates that are more rural, on the other hand, Efforts to green the environment have to compete against the spread of desertification, the depletion of water supplies, and temperature records that have never been broken. It is believed that humans are the primary driver of climate change. In a nation where rainfall is rare and groundwater is being depleted, the SGI roadmap aims to halt and reverse desertification and soil degradation, conserve limited water resources, and preserve the unique biodiversity of the kingdom. There are currently 15 locations in Saudi Arabia that are protected because of the high levels of biodiversity found there. Twelve of these sites are located on land, and the remaining three are located in marine environments. The National Center for Wildlife has proposed raising that number to 75, with 62 being located on land and 13 being located in coastal and marine areas. Around 6% of the kingdom's total land area is protected under the King Salman Royal Natural Reserve which is located in the north of the country. It consists of mountainous terrain, huge plains and high plateaus, and it is home to around 300 different types of animals, as well as rare archaeological heritage sites, some of which date back to as far as 8000 BC. The authorities of the reserve and its partners have recently collaborated to contribute to SGI's goals by planting 100,000 seedlings with the assistance and participation of volunteers as part of a cooperation with Maden. In an interview with Arab News, a spokeswoman for the KSRNR stated, We are committed to growing the vegetation cover, as we have already achieved in planting 600,000 plants as well as having various seed sowing programs to enhance the vegetation in the reserve. Both the trees and the shrubs are examples of perennial plants, and they are responsible for rehabilitating the habitats that have been damaged by the desert. 
These plants are native to the desert ecosystems and have evolved to the harsh conditions that are typical of the desert, such as high temperatures and a lack of rainfall. They do not require an excessive amount of water for irrigation. The strategic goal of the reserve is to build a seedling program that will encompass several projects, such as the installation of the main nursery. Despite this, water continues to be one of the most significant obstacles in the way of greening initiatives and conservation efforts in the kingdom. The people who lived on the Arabian Peninsula dug freshwater wells over the course of several centuries in order to find a means to maintain life and make it through periods of drought. In the course of time, and particularly in the wake of the economic boom that hit the kingdom in the 1970s, Saudis shifted their focus to more sophisticated farming practices, progressively drawing on groundwater supplies. Saudi Arabia does not have any rivers or natural lakes, and it receives relatively little annual rainfall to replenish its sources of water. As a result, the country's eastern and western coastline sections both have desalination plants that draw seawater in order to supply the country's inland towns. Despite this, the demand for fresh water is increasing while natural aquifers are rapidly running out of water. Hence, the Saudi government is looking at ways to preserve its water resources and use them in a more efficient manner. This will allow them to continue to meet the demands of an expanding economy while also ensuring that green spaces continue to receive adequate watering. According to statements made by Maria Nava, a scientific consultant for Greening Arabia at the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology Center for Desert Agriculture, the SGI's strategic team is expected to tap into treated wastewater in order to irrigate freshly planted vegetation. Another objective, according to her statement, is to limit rainfall loss to the sea or through sand infiltration by the implementation and improvement of water harvesting in the kingdom and remediation of soil for water retention where it is needed. Compared to their counterparts in mountain, wadi and desert climates, plants in urban environments require significantly more water and canopy cover for shade, according to Nava. She went on to say that this vegetation demands more water in comparison with desert trees, which are resistant to drought and have fewer leaves. Nava stated that the process of desalination requires more energy than the treatment of wastewater. It is feasible to recycle all of the wastewater for the purpose of irrigation, given that the water quality is suitable for doing so, and there are existing plans for this to take place in the kingdom. There is already some reuse of treated wastewater, and as part of the national water policy, the reuse of treated wastewater will reach 70% by 2030, with plans to raise this percentage in the near future. Communities all around the kingdom are beginning to take a more active role in the efforts to fulfill the aims of the SGI and establish a greener future as the nation as a whole is becoming more mindful of the natural bounty that it possesses. Nava is quoted as saying that the communities are the base for all the projects to become genuine and flourish. It is of the utmost importance to engage and include the people, hear their demands, understand their customs, and incorporate them into the decision-making process. The implementation of the Sustainable Growth Initiative needs to be founded on three primary pillars – social, economic, and sustainable. That's all for the video today. We will be right back with more. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.